It's the National Football League on EA Sports. And if it's in the game, it's in the game. It's the Chicago Bears and the Jacksonville Jaguars. And it kicks off next on Madden NFL 24. On the banks of the St. Johns River, there's a good look inside Everbank Stadium here in downtown Jacksonville. Coming up, we got a good matchup on tap here as it'll be the Chicago Bears taking on the Jacksonville Jaguars. Alongside my broadcast partner, Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gauden, and as we look at this matchup, Every time there's something different to focus on. So I'll just ask you, what do you see here in this one? Well, Rembrandt, you've given me a pretty blank canvas to focus on, haven't you? Yeah. Where do you think I'm going to go with this? Oh, secondary? You know me. You know me well, right? In a game like this, it's always about the secondary. Can they handle the passing attack and make a few plays? Just about time to rock as Toe gets ready to need leather. And off we go from Jacksonville. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. So here are the Bears now for their opening drive. And they will be led out by the youngster, the rookie, their QB. Every quarterback in the NFL has a little bit of his own signature style out there. But for this guy, he really plays the game in a different way. It's led to a couple double takes from us up here as we see him as something truly unique. It's not that he's just the strongest passer or the best athlete to ever play the position. He just has a certain way of seeing the action and it allows him to make some special plays out there. Now Williams throwing to start the drive. And the timing a bit off that time as that one falls to the ground. How about that? Red man coverage and decided to test him early. But they proved up to the task and forced the incompletion. Now a second and ten. Throwing again, Williams. And too much juice. It'll be out of bounds, incomplete. They are such a talented team at defending the perimeter and taking away throws to the outside. Great confidence, great skill. Crowd getting in it a bit already. Here's an early third and 10. Back to throw, Williams. Oh, he tries to force it in and it's intercepted. And they are gonna set up shop at the 32 yard line. Well, short of them returning it for a pick six, that was about the worst start you could ask for in this one because your advantage of getting the ball first is gone, and they're set up a short distance from your end zone. Now you're counting on your defense to prevent a touchdown, and your offense, you better be ready to come out swinging on the next series. So here are the Jaguars in great field position already. They're led by the number one overall pick in the 2021 draft, Trevor Lawrence. We're seeing it more and more in this league, how teams love to have athletes back there taking the snaps, guys who can throw it and move around and get yards with their legs if needed. He's one of the best examples that we see out there right now. He can throw for hundreds of yards one week and then run for 100 plus the next. He adds an extra dimension that really confounds defenses when he puts it all together. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. From the shotgun, Lawrence. This one complete to Christian Kirk. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. In so many ways, throwing the hitch route is actually one of the safer things an offense can do. Get the ball out to the receiver as fast as possible. Hope he's got man-to-man -man coverage and hope that his athleticism wins on the perimeter. Lawrence will throw. He's going to hit his man out of the backfield. Complete. And down inside the 15 he goes. The Jaguars. 
Jags picking up the first down there, a gain of 12. Well, I think when they look at their offense, they think to themselves, weapons, weapons everywhere. And they want to move the ball around. They want to spread it to different people. But you absolutely know they want to get this man involved as well. And that's what they just did on that play. Now Lawrence on first down. A quick throw there is incomplete. The intended target there was Gabriel Davis. And now it's second down. Throwing again here. It's Lawrence. And he's got his man in stride. Complete. Nine yards, not quite enough, and they'll be left now with third and one. And forget about the run to set up the pass. They're just coming out throwing. Forget trying to set anything up. They feel like they have the advantage. They feel like they have the matchups, and they're just attacking right now. Yep, going to the air on the opening drive. Third down and one. Lawrence. And the Jaguars use the early turnover to get on the board first here in this one. Well, it was third and one. I was expecting run so much for that. They pass it, they score it. That had the feel of the head coach telling the offensive coordinator, you've got four downs here. We're going to go for it on fourth down unless there's a disaster on third. Go ahead and take a shot if you want to. And he gratefully accepted the opportunity and did exactly that. If they didn't get it there, that had the feel that they would come back and try it on fourth down. Extra point splits the uprights, and it's now a 7 nothing game. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. This take it in at the goal line. And some good special teams coverage as they bring him down just outside of the 15. Chicago works their way back onto the field here for their second drive of the game. They threw an interception the first time they had the football, wound up leading to a touchdown the other way. How do you approach drive number two? Going back to your game plan coming in, everyone has matchups that they like better than others. Where they think they have an advantage, dial up some of those plays. Try and go to those spots and get your offense moving. This is Swift on the counter, and he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. Plays like we just saw there. That's why they're up right now. And the defense, they're doing their job. Yeah, it starts with the guys up front. So when you talk with GMs who are putting together a team, a lot of them say, we're going to build from the inside out because if you control the line of scrimmage, you control the rest of the ball game. And that's what we're seeing here. They're actually playing in the offense's backfield, not necessarily just playing at the line of scrimmage. Now a deep ball there on second down, but it'll wind up incomplete. And he's missed now his first four passing attempts. The rhythm is just not there to begin this ball game. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means he'll need to come up with something here on third down. Looking to throw, Williams. And that will be incomplete. They certainly thought he had a window to push that ball downfield, but as soon as he released the throw, the corner was there to slam that window shut. Here comes the Bears punter now, standing just about on his own goal line. Kirk now, the return man. It'll be a 44-yard punt, six on the return. And it will be first and 10 as they take over. So time to see Jacksonville again on offense for the second time here in this game. This could end up being a pretty big drive. I mean, look, yes, it's early in this game, but they scored the touchdown, they got the stop, and now if they could get in the end zone here again, CD, they could grab an early stranglehold on this one. Yeah, they certainly can, and that's what you're looking for. Where's the advantage? Can you gain it? Can you press it? Now for them? 
finishing it off because right now it's out there for them. They've just got to go seize it. Oh, he had a man running free, but he overshot him, and it's incomplete. A little bit of finger pointing and heavy discussion going on in the defensive backfield. It's man coverage, but they leave a guy wide open. They've got to be counting their lucky stars that this ball was overthrown. On second down, a run with ETN. And a good burst there, gets him seven up to midfield. That was a really nice run there to bring up third and short. After the incompletion on first down, it's awfully nice to have a running back that you can hand it to and put you back in a good situation. They'll come up now third and three. On play action, Lawrence rolling to his right. And I don't think he got there, no. He's short by maybe a foot, maybe. Call it fourth and inches. And partner, I would guess that in his headset he was hearing from his coach, it's third down, don't take a sack. And in this case, he's able to avoid the pressure and get out of there. He doesn't get the first down, but he does turn a possible loss into positive yardage. Here's Logan Cook now to punt this one away. too much leg there that'll be a touchback but now the Bears coming out as they get ready still in the first half but this offense has struggled haven't really been able to get anything going not only in the points category but in the yards category let's we'll see if they can do better here on this drive they're coming out with a jumbo package to start the drive Off the bootleg, Williams. Pass completed to Steven Carlson. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. 36 yards on the play. Running their plays over and over during the week can often get robotic for an offense. But on game day, they can often flow smoothly, as that one just did. So the big play gets him across midfield now for first and ten. Off the play fake, Williams. And that is incomplete. Oh, that's some good closing speed there defensively because that looked open for a minute. That's great work with the ball in the air. Never gave up, converged on his man, and broke the play up. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. To throw again, Williams. That's caught by his tight end, Gerald Everett. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. Looking for the out route, and he's got more. And he will have the Bears first down, I do believe. Yes, he's got it by about a yard there on third and three. A little football 101 there. You just see the receiver try to run down the defender, meaning he goes right at him, and really trying to move him a little bit towards the center of the field so he can put his foot in the ground and break to the out, to the sideline, and make a catch. And down he goes! The second back right around the 41-yard line. Multiple players combined for their team's first sack of the game. Partner, the Mike linebacker, the middle linebacker, has so many different responsibilities. How excited do you think he was to get home with that blitz? Yeah, he wants a sack. He got it. Williams now. Off play action. There's a short throw. It's caught by Kamek. He's going to go out of bounds, but he takes this one down just shy of the 20. First catch for him on the afternoon, and it results in a first down. You don't always expect tight ends to be big in terms of run after the catch, but after that play, he joins a growing band of players that's putting that stereotype right on its ear. Here 
here's Williams on first down. Wide open receiver complete. And he'll be taken down at the two-yard line. That is now 19-yard gains on back-to-back -back plays. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit them, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. Here's Swift. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. That's going to wind up a loss of a full three yards on first down. Sometimes you just sit back and marvel at what he can do defensively. Speed, strength, quickness. He's the whole package. And that package just wrapped up the runner for a loss. Back at the five-yard line now, second and goal. Back to throw. Williams toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. Well, it certainly appears that they're going to try and keep getting him the football. It's the third time they've looked in his direction. Unfortunately, haven't completed one yet, but I'm not sure they're going to shy away from him. They feel like they've got something there, and they want to capitalize on I it. I think you're right. We're only in the first quarter, so a lot of opportunities ahead. Williams going to throw on third and goal. That's to Moore, and he's got it. Touchdown, Bears. A five-yard touchdown catch, and the Bears are within an extra point of tying up this ball game. That pass also evens the ledger for the rookie quarterback. Had the interception earlier, and now he gets the touchdown throw. The ideal touchdown interception ratio is what? Three to one for the best quarterbacks. But he's a rookie. Just getting back to even is a big deal. Increases the confidence his teammates have in him as he tries to become their leader. Santos with the extra point, and we are tied at seven. A 10-play drive that time, and it concludes with a touchdown reception by D.J. Moore. So I'll leave it at seven now as they kick it away. And this will not be returned. It's a touchback, and they'll begin at the 25. And now out come the Jags. Over on the sideline, hoping to hit that reset button between possessions. Last time out, they had to punt it away. This time, hoping to finish this thing off in the end zone. Lawrence bringing the Jaguars up first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. Now they'll try and set up the quarterback draw here. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here, and if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal, get a couple of first downs, run some plays, run some clock, allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath, settle down, and relax a little bit after they just gave up a score. On second down, here's Lawrence. That's caught by Gabriel Davis. Four yards the pick up, first down. On first and ten, it's ETN. And they will only muster a yard here to the 38. Now that's the type of play that'll fire up the defense, hold them to one yard on a first down run. It'll be interesting to see if the offense decides to press the run at all or if they'll abandon it now after gaining only one on that play. 38-yard line, second and nine. Here's Lawrence to throw. Throwing quickly there, but it's incomplete. Luke Farrell was the intended target, and it'll bring up third down. Now Lawrence. Well, almost, but not quite. 
needed 10. He got nine. Fourth down. Here's Logan Cook now, as he'll kick it away for the second time. And the kick's away as he angles this one for the sideline. And this one will not be returnable as it sails out of bounds. Here's the Chicago offense coming back out onto the field. And the momentum just continuing to build and build for them. They had the touchdown, their last drive to tie the game. Now their defense does its job, and Charles, all of a sudden, they've got a chance to capture the lead here. And we're seeing a really nice exhibition of what coaches love to call complimentary football. Offense gets a tie, defense does its job, gets the ball right back, and their teammates now have momentum. What a nice job they're doing, all doing it together. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Well, they've got man coverage on the outside, and my scouting report on these DBs tells me that they love to take matters in their own hands. They want man coverage, not zone. And there was good coverage there that forced the incompletion. Here's second and 10 now from the 29. They run out of the gun with Swift. And he'll scratch out a yard up to the 30, and that's all. We haven't seen much from him running the football here in this first quarter. No, you're right about that. We haven't seen much of him at all so far. They've stacked him up pretty well, but when you're trying to run the football, sometimes you've got to play the long game. Keep handing it to him, and some of those runs that aren't working now, they turn into six, seven, eight, and maybe more later on. Now Williams to throw on third down. And he backs it away, and it falls to incomplete. It's a great job by this secondary. When I watch them, they remind me of elite defenders on a basketball court, right? They want to contest each and every pass. Great contest on third down to bring up fourth. Here comes the Bears punter now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. His first punt, 48 yards. This one looks equally as good. On the return is Kirk. A 46-yard punt, four-yard return. And the Jaguars go on offense, first down and 10. Out comes the Jacksonville offense as they get set to take over here. Lawrence bringing the Jaguars up first and 10 at their 25-yard line. They'll try and start this drive in the air. And he'll go down. The Bears get there for the sack. Jervon Dexter busting through to get him for a loss of six. And this is what you've got to do against a quarterback like him. You've got to keep him in the pocket and not let him get to the perimeter because once he gets outside, that's where he can really hurt you. On second down, Lawrence. And that's going to be incomplete. I know conventional wisdom says, hey, don't get it all back in one play. But sometimes, you go ahead and try to. They tried to get it all back on that one. Weren't able to do so. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Here's Lawrence. Screenplay, here's ETN. And they'll get him down here at the 23. He did his best to just get four out of that, but not enough. And now fourth down. Boy, that was certainly well-read defensively. And the key to any screenplay is space to work. And there was none to be found there. And they tackle him for just a short gain. Here's Logan Cook now as he's on to punt for Jacksonville. And he's getting a workout here in this first quarter as he gets it away. Fair catch called for in May, but now we'll have to see about the penalty. This is one of the dangers of going for the punt block. And you know before you even call going for the block, it's a risk-reward play. So many factors come into it. They went after it, and you know punters, what they do? They leave their leg up in there an extra count or two, hoping someone comes into contact. So a big break. The roughing the kicker called on fourth down leads to first and ten. 
Now Lawrence to throw. Quick slant caught by Kirk. And that's good for a gain of six. And that'll bring up second down. I think defensively you're okay with that. You're in the first quarter. He's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on. And I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle them, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that, you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch. Now you put the offense in a position where every series, they have to work hard to pick up first downs, and you tend to stall them out when you do that. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. These two teams all tied after one. Second quarter now from Jacksonville, and it's the Jags with the football. As they've got it with a first and ten. Now Lawrence. That's caught by his tight end, Evan Ingram. Give him a gain of five on the completion, and it's second down. They gave up the completion there, but this is what zone defenses count on. Catching the ball and not much run after the catch. Here's a second and five. Looking to throw, Lawrence. He targets Ingram for another ground. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made here at the Bears' 22-yard line. That one goes for 24 yards. But one of the ways the quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play Never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving. Scan the field. And here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. Back to the ground with ETN. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. After another really nice run, this is where a defense coordinator earns his money. His guys have been on the field a long time, so he's got to decide what he wants to do to try and slow them down. Is he going to substitute some players in, get some fresh guys, or is he just going to try to attack and try and find a way to take the ball away from them? Now Lawrence to throw on second down. Throwing down, and it's complete. And the Jags are going to have a first and goal as he's taken down at about the eight-yard line. Back to throw, Lawrence. Got his man, it's caught. Touchdown, Jaguars. Evan Ingram from eight yards out. And the Jaguars have taken the lead. Sometimes those tight ends are a mismatch. They found the mismatch there. And that's exactly why you want to drop those types of plays because coverage is just going to go to the natural guys, the guys that make the big plays on the outside. But if you work your tight end into it, that's a tough one for a defense to handle. Tough. They couldn't handle it. It worked out for six. Extra point right down the middle. And that makes the score 14-7. to seven. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. And no chance to get away as they'll get him down at about the 17-yard line. And now Chicago getting ready to go as they take the field. They trail a one-score deficit, 14-7, as they come up first and 10. They'll start on the ground with Swift. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. 
Foye Aluakon finding his way to the ball for a stop. A tackle for loss. I have a feeling they'll stay committed to running the football, especially on the early downs. They just haven't had a whole lot of success just yet. First play of the drive goes the wrong way. Here's second and 12. Operating from the gun, Williams. A little short pass. This is Everett. And able to get this across the 20 before going out of bounds. When you execute a drag or a crossing route really well and give them a chance to let it develop a little bit, you can gain some significant yardage hitting your tight end on that one. The Bears on third down. Two for five to this point. This is third and four. Looking to throw. Williams. And that is incomplete. Well, the covers we just saw break out on third down. Dive defense, blanketed the field with extra defensive backs and speed, unable to find an open hole to complete that pass. Here comes the Bears punter now, as he'll come on to kick this one away. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. Take it in at the 22. 51 yards on the punt there. And they will take over first and 10. The Jags offense now gets set and heads back onto the field. And they'll be looking to build off of a nice drive last time, a drive that really relied on the quarterback. Making good decisions, distributing the ball well, distributing it accurately, keeping it away from danger. A really nicely run drive. But now the defense, what adjustments do they need to make in the passing game? Pass rush, pass rush, pass <laughs> rush. Whether it's the simple, guys huh? up front, or maybe you bring additional guys, but you've got to disrupt the timing of them throwing the and football. We'll see if they can disrupt it here. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Right off the bat, it's a first down to start the drive, 12 yards. Good strong throw and catch right there. And so far in this game, the alleys have been open for them to get completions, and they're taking advantage of it. ETN up the middle. And he's got it across midfield and into Bear territory. Nine yards is the pick up there, and they'll have a second and one. ETN once more. And some solid footwork there as he'll take this down to about the 38. The Jags picking up the first down there, a gain of 12. Blocking at the point of attack there was very strong. He had a couple of running lanes. And I never want to overlook the offensive line, but that's what they get paid to do. How about the quarterback? Everyone thinks all he's going to do is throw the football. His movement and deception can help a running game as well. Running out of the gun with ETN. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. Second and seven, operating from the 34. And now they'll throw it with Lawrence. Looking middle, and it's incomplete. I see the surprise in your face there, partner. That is a rare incompletion from him. He's been on point this entire game. He has percentage completion-wise way up. Not that time. So third down. They need to get to the 28 for a first. Looking to throw Lawrence. Working the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he will have the Jaguars first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Pretty good location there on that throw. It really was, wasn't it? That was likely one where the receiver was either going to catch it or no one. Really good decision. And boy, what a catch and move right there. And a tough spot to get it over the middle. Here's a give to ETN. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down.
From the 22 now, here's second down and seven. They'll bring a receiver in motion right. Here's a fake on the jet sweep, and instead a give up the middle. And he takes it in. Touchdown, Jacksonville. 22 yards for Travis Etienne. And the Jaguars go up by two touchdowns. Point after try, forthcoming. It's good, and it is now 21-7. So that drive goes eight plays. And it was capped off by a Travis Etienne touchdown run. is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. Khalil Herbert to return it from his end zone. And in hindsight, probably should have taken a knee as he only gets this out to the 16-yard line. The Bears offense out there set and ready to go. The drive will start with an option going left. And he'll take this one up over the 20 to the 21-yard line. It'll be a pickup of five on the keeper. It's second down. A little do-it-yourself run right there and a nice game. And I like that he knew that that was about all he was going to get. So he did a nice job of protecting himself, took care of the football, took what the defense gave him. If they continue to allow him to do that, they'll find their way taking what they can all the way to the end zone. On second down, Swift. And he'll be brought down right at the 30 here. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. Even though they gave up more than they wanted to on that play, it actually illustrates how well they bottled him up throughout the game because that was his longest run of this contest. So first and 10 now from the 30. Back to throw. Williams. A little short pass. This is Everett. And he gets this up across the 35 before he's out of bounds. Ball on the 36 now. Here's a second and four. Operating from the gun. Williams. Now a quick throw there, but it's going to be incomplete. So another incompletion there. He's hitting on fewer than half his pass attempts in this one, and that is not a winning formula. Yeah, so let's make sure we give a little bit of credit to the defense here. They've given him a lot to think about, a lot of different looks, and he seems a little bit confused trying to complete passes. Williams now from the gun on third down. He's got his target. That's complete. A huge play there for Chicago. 51 yards. He's already got one touchdown this first half already. That very nearly was a second. Defensively, they're going to have to figure something out because he's been able to outrun the defenders early and often so far. A real field flipper there as all of a sudden they've got a first down in the red zone. They will run straight ahead with Swift. And he'll fight his way down right around the 12. They follow up that gigantic game with the tiniest of pickups, one yard. The passing game's been working quite well so far, but the running game's been a little bit of a struggle, and that's a surprise to me. Typically, when you can throw it, you've opened up lanes for your runners. They work now on second and nine. They'll stay on the ground with Swift. And he'll be taken down here at about the 11. Two runs in a row, but only two yards to show for. Eighth play of the drive, forthcoming, and they need eight yards on third down. 
Looking to throw. Williams. Touchdown, Bears! Gerald Everett. An 11 yard touchdown. And the Bears have got it back to within a score. For good reason, quarterbacks want to get the ball to the perimeter to their wide receivers for big plays. But in this situation, it felt like, based on coverage, he knew that he wanted his tight end to have the football, and for good reason. Now the point after try for Santos. It's up and good. This becomes a 21-14 ball game now. So that drive takes him down the field in eight plays. And the end result is a Bears touchdown. After the touchdown, here's Santos to kick this one away. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And they'll start this drive just across the 30. Pretty nice work on the return. Jacksonville offense gets the ball back. Travis Etienne and company head back out there. And you see the last drive, great chunky yardage, the touchdown on five carries. And offensively, everything just looked in sync, didn't it? It did, and, and the reason that it was in sync is because it's a combination of play calling, game plan, offensive line marrying up with all their blocks. But don't forget the receivers out on the perimeter. Any type of a long run, the receivers have had a hand in that because they've occupied people downfield. And of course, give the big credit to the man with the football. Great vision, good movement, gets to the end zone. Now ETN to start the drive. And he gets this to the 35. Good for a gain of five. Hey, it's not the most spectacular play, but I think most teams will take that every single time for the first play of a drive. Begin the series with positive yardage and set yourself up for a very manageable second down. Ball on the 35. Here comes second and five. From the shotgun, Lawrence. And Davis has it over the middle. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. I think that's a big pickup for a first down because when you run a drag route against zone, you're sometimes asking for trouble because you might run into a defender. Yeah, well, there they ran into a first down, executed it to perfection. A shotgun snap and a give to ETN. And he'll be taken down after a short gain as that takes us to the two-minute warning. The Lawrence will throw. They'll try and set up the screen to ETN. And we'll get it down to the 47 here. It'll be a pickup of eight on the screen, and it sets up a third down. With all the success they've had throwing the football as a pass rusher, you know you've got to come hard when you see them drop back to throw. So I really like this call to counteract that pass rush with a screen. It turns into positive yardage. A lot of times the offense says, just replace the rusher with the ball, and it turns into a good play. Dance into his left. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made here at the Bears' 35. The third down conversion is successful. Give him 12 yards that time. Creeping up on a minute to play in this first half. On first and 10, it's Lawrence. A short throw to Ingram. It'll be a gain of just a yard, and that's going to bring up second down. I know when you got a top tight end like this, you want to get him involved, but when you do, you're hoping for more than that. You certainly are. You've got to try and get him some space where he can make a play downfield, or at least an opportunity for some rack yardage, right? That run after catch. Now second and nine. 
Lawrence. And this is taken in at the five. And he will reach the five-yard line before going out of bounds. He got 29 yards that time. They've looked his way quite a bit, and in my estimation, as well they should. Well, that's now five catches in this first half alone. And he picks up another first down. He's been an important part of their offense here early. And I believe they buzz down. They're going to take another look at this play with all reviews coming from the replay official here in the final two minutes of the half. Did he keep those feet in bounds? That's the question they've got to decide. And I got to say, watching it in real time, it was awfully close. Yeah, it certainly looked like a heck of a catch because he didn't appear to bobble it, which could complicate things. But even with the benefit of replay, that's pretty tight. Well, here's the call. A chance to really cap off a big first half here as they come up on first and goal. Back to throw. Lawrence. Now they go screen. It's complete. And he'll get blown up behind the line of scrimmage. Back at the six. It'll go as a loss on the play. Not what you need down here. It's going to be second and goal. Now another timeout called for by the offense as they'll stop it with a little over 30 seconds to go in the first half of play. Second and goal from the six this time. Throwing again here, it's Lawrence. And that is caught. Touchdown, Jacksonville. With his second touchdown here in this first half. And the Jaguars will extend their lead in the final minute of the half. And that's certainly an important score right there because they gave themselves a two-score cushion heading towards halftime. Now you got to force the other team out of their comfort zone, and it changes the way you approach the second half as well. How you want to do things on offense, and your defense feels much better too, having that lead. Point after, right down the middle. And the lead now up to 14. That time, a nine-play drive. And Evan Ingram able to finish it off with a touchdown reception. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. And able to take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. The Bears going to get one more possession in this first half. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. Final 24 seconds of the first half as they come up here first and 10. Throwing to start the drive. Williams toward the sideline, and look at that catch. Dragging the toes, and that's going to be a first down. Well done. Give him 12 yards on that one. It earns him a fresh set of downs. When you struggle on offense, you're looking for anything possible to get you going. Sometimes you do it like basketball teams that don't normally press. You put a press on, bring people to life, make them move a little bit quicker. Maybe that'll help them as they head towards the half. Williams. That'll be incomplete as the clock will stop with 14 seconds remaining. Ah, with a rookie quarterback out there, you're definitely going to find out how he handles adversity because this one so far hasn't gone according to plan. He's got to fight through it and show him what he's made of. Second and ten. Operating from the gun, Williams. They'll find Everett there, complete. Now the Bears going to call the first of their timeouts. As 
as they stop it with 11 seconds remaining in this first half. Here is third down and four. Again, he'll drop to throw. That'll be incomplete with nine seconds now showing on the clock. Not much going on this drive. Looks like they're going to have to punt it away, CD. And right now, I know a lot of their fans are screaming for the OC to change things up, get away from what he's been calling. Sometimes you just need better execution of the plays that have been called. Here comes the Bears punter now. He's been terrific so far. He'll get off a fairly short kick here as this is toward the sideline. And no return possible here as they angle this one out of bounds. All that remains is to snap this once, and that'll do it for the first half of play. So we have come to halftime in what's already a two-touchdown game. As we send you a couple hours south of here to Orlando, that's where we check in with a coach and our EA Sports Halftime Report. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. Back to you guys in a bit. But first, we welcome everyone to our EA Sports Halftime Report. The Jags were treated to a strong first half from their franchise quarterback, Trevor Lawrence. He threw a first quarter touchdown pass, then two more in the second quarter, a three touchdown half. And he may just be getting started. All right, coach, thanks very much. Fine work as always, as we welcome you back for quarter number three. The Jaguars in possession of the lead, and they will get the football as we are underway in the second half. And this will not be returned, so the second half begins with a touchback. The Jaguars ready to get going to start quarter number three. But Charles, for them, pretty good first half on the ground. They had some success running the ball in quarters one and two, and they've got the lead. Now a chance to expand upon that lead here with their first drive in the third quarter. Yeah, and believe it or not, you and I have noticed that this great game of football has shifted towards pass first, run second. So for me, it's really nice to see some of these teams keeping the ground game as a big component of their offense, and it's working pretty well for them now. And let's face it, they can continue to do damage with it. And in addition, it sets up the pass game really well for them, too. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Not a big run on the first play of the drive, but that doesn't necessarily mean it was a bad play. Sometimes you're just trying to settle in, get your guys a little bit of contact, and get things moving. On second down, Etienne once more. And he's going to get about seven yards on that one up to around the 33. And hold on here because on that last run, it looks like we have a player who was shaken up. While they come out and take a look at him, we will step aside for just a moment. Two yards still to go. Third down now. Another tote for Etienne. And he's going to have the first down yardage to the 35. A third down gain of three yards, and that'll be enough. Well, someone's been having a good game so far, and you know something? A lot of it's been power running. They decided to turn him loose again on third down, didn't they? They did indeed. He delivered the tough yards. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. They'll try the left side with ETN. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. And plays like that are exactly what this defense needs here early in the second half to give it a little spark. I think their halftime adjustments, what they talked about, maybe it's just a little inspirational speech. Who knows? But looks like they're ready to go. On the counter, ETN. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. 
That'll wind up as a loss on the play, so now they're staring at a third down and 12. Overall, I'd have to say that was just really good team defense because, to me, you can't pin that one on the running back. He had no shot there. He had a man in his face immediately. The last two plays each lose a yard. They'll try to move forward here on third and 12. He's going to go for a big play downfield. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. Zone coverage there, and they were playing deep. That makes it obviously a little bit harder to run by guys. And that time, there was not much of a window to get the ball in there, and it winds up incomplete. Here's Logan Cook now as he's on to punt for Jacksonville. And a fair catch signaled for and taken at about the 18-yard line. So a change of possession here on the punt, and the Bears take over. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. And their defense did its job by forcing the punt to start things out. And now, Charles, can the offense get in gear? I think, partner, you can sense them saying, okay, the first half was theirs, but now let's get the momentum back on our side. We forced the punt. Now let's go downfield and score. If we do that, we'll be set up well for this second half. They'll start by running the option to the right. And he'll get this up to the 30-yard line. A gain of 11 to kick off the drive, and it's a quick first down. Well, with him trailing here in the second half, maybe his legs can try to give this offense a spark. And that's the benefit of having a young quarterback, right? Having a rookie, a guy who will say, hold on a second, I have a little bit of fearlessness to my game. It isn't working as well the other way. Let's see what I can do to help my team this way. And boy, he did it there. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. And those two just haven't been in sync thus far. They've done a nice job against him, but still, with his talent, you would expect them to have more completions to him in this game. Here's second and ten. Looking to throw, Williams. And that's out to the flat for Swift. And a pretty little juke move there on a nice game. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. Back to throw. Williams. Pass to the sideline and pulled in. And he's able to get this one out closer to midfield across the 45. That is first catch so far. They've held him under wraps, but he's got a first down there. If you're running out route, it's likely you end up near the sideline. And what did we just see there? The Toe tap. You got it. The benefits. The red challenge flag making an appearance. Doug Peterson not liking what he saw there. Did he keep those feet in bounds? That's the question they've got to decide. And I got to say, watching it in real time, it was awfully close. Yeah, it certainly looked like a heck of a catch because he didn't appear to bobble it, which could complicate things. But even with the benefit of replay, that's pretty tight. Well, here's the call. So the challenge there does not go their way. This will indeed remain a completed pass. Couple of first downs to kick off the drive. Here's first and 10 up at the 46. They'll look to throw again. Looks for the out route and it's complete to commit. And they'll get to him after a gain of seven to the 47. Well, that's always a good place to throw it just because he's one of the biggest targets not only on this team, but in the National Football League. And you and I both know the quarterbacks love these large body tight ends and why not? Nowadays, they're really wide receivers who are just taller and have a little bit more weight. These guys catch the football, make big plays downfield. In the old days, we wanted them to block. Now coaches want them to catch the football first. And all the way inside the 15 before they drop him. The catch and run going to wind up netting him 33 yards. We have seen big plays from both quarterbacks throughout this game, and there's another one right there going back and forth, almost like two excellent guitar soloists 
trying to top each other with each additional play. So how about this for field position after the big play? Inside the 15 now as they come up on first and 10. Now here's a look for the end zone, but that one's going to wind up incomplete. A lot of times it's that first read that you have. Maybe you get it in pre-snap and he locked in on his target, but he was covered quite well, and that one's incomplete. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. And he's got it! And the Bears are looking at first and goal as he's tackled all the way down at the two-yard line. As the field starts to get condensed, the defense likes that a lot because now you don't have as much space to cover, but a well-run corner route there. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. Swift. Touchdown. Well, he finishes off the drive with a touchdown run, Charles. Remember, he also had a catch on this drive as well. And that's what running backs want to be in today's NFL, a complete back. Three downs, stay on the field, run it, and catch it. And he gets it done. Santos now to add the PAT. He's got it, and they're back within a touchdown at 28-21. So that drive consumes nine plays, all told. And it's culminated by a two-yard touchdown run. After the touchdown, here Santos to kick this one away. And he'll decide to not bring this one out as their drive will begin at the 25. Jacksonville set to go again offensively. Pretty important third quarter drive for them. Momentum has sort of shifted the other direction after that last touchdown as they nurse this small lead. Lawrence bringing the Jaguars up first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. They'll look to ETN to start things out. And not much to speak of. Call it a one-yard gain up to the 26. The last play got just a yard. Here's second and nine from the 26. Here's Lawrence to throw. And a catch made by his tight end, Luke Farrell. So the completion results there in nine yards. And they'll be faced with a third and in inches. They'll run with ETN. And he's got the first before he's brought down at the 39-yard line. They're able to convert with a gain of four. Brandon, they're still in the lead, but momentum's certainly been going the opposite direction. So to me, that's a really important pickup there on third down. Try and regain some confidence, and you're right. They need to stem the tide a little bit. That certainly helped. On first down, right back to ETN. And good vision there as he's across midfield and down to the 45-yard line. 108 yards now for ETN, and he's got a first down. Consecutive plays now where that offensive line has really created a lot of space. And we've seen the confidence rise, haven't we? It borders on arrogance now, and that's that good arrogance, believing you can run the football whenever you get good and ready. Throwing now, Lawrence on first down. That's caught on the left side by Kirk. So five yards here, five on the play. And that will bring up second down. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. 
Here's Lawrence. And oh, he's unable to hold on to that defensively. A potential game changer, but it falls incomplete. Not his best throw there, but where we sit right now in the third quarter, he's had a pretty good game throwing the football. He certainly has, and it's not exactly at the point where we're doing four-minute offense yet, but they've got to think about, I'm not going to say milking the clock, but understanding clock management here on out. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. And he is going to have a Jags first down by about a yard. It's a gain of five on third and four. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. They'll send a receiver in motion to the right. And they're going to give it to him on the jet sweep. Oh, uh, this one it may need to go back to the drawing board. He's going to be swallowed up right away. Give him nine on the carry that time, and they're set up with a second and one. Well, if you like the guys who run the ball, you're enjoying watching this. But the other guys, especially the defense coordinator, trying to figure out an answer on how to slow down the running game, I think maybe starts to call more blitzes because you can call run blitzes in order to try and get more people to the point of attack. And they do get him down, but not before he's able to slip it inside the five-yard line. The end result, 21 yards. I'll tell you what, a lot of those mid-range throws have been available because sometimes teams get too concerned about the deep ball and they leave too much space in front of them. And these guys have been taking advantage so far. ETN. Is in. Touchdown, Jacksonville. And he certainly played a pivotal role with those two TDs and why they're up on the scoreboard right now. Well, someone's all about winning, aren't they? Because he's not worried about the number. Sure, it's great to have two touchdowns. But the bottom line is what he's doing is contributing to their lead. He wants to continue to do so. Extra point attempt here still to come. And he's been a busy man. Five for five now as he knocks another one through to extend the lead. So that one a pretty time-consuming 10-play drive. And it was capped off by a Travis Etienne touchdown run. Here's the Jaguar kick team now as they run up and send this one away. From the end zone, here comes Herbert. And ultimately cannot get this out to the 25-yard line as he's dropped at the 23. The Chicago offense set to get started. So remember, Charles, last time they were out here, they scored, but they just saw the opposition score, and they're trailing right now, so they're trying to keep pace here. They need a touchdown drive. Well, if you're a fan of offense, you're loving this, but if you're a fan of defense, this is tough to watch, and it's also tough to keep that up when you just watch your opponent march down the field on a scoring drive that lasts into double-digit snaps. You need a score here not just to follow the momentum from your last drive, but put the onus back on your opponent. And that's what they're doing right now, swapping that onus back and forth. They always say that real estate is about location. Well, guess what? When it's a slant route, the quick ones, timing, timing, timing. You gotta be able to lead your man with the football. And the timing off right there, threw it behind him. He'll try again with the arm here on second down. Try to force it to Allen, and it's intercepted. It's Devin Lloyd with a pick, and they will take over at the 29-yard line. We know that the rookie's going to go to a top target like that often. That time, though, maybe a little telegraphed. And that's not unusual, because you do tend to lock in on one of your better players and went under duress, went in doubt. You're going to throw the ball in his direction, because oftentimes... You could be wrong, but that receiver will make you right. But it won't happen every time. Gooders know this, and they get attracted to the football. Yeah. 
They shall run with three tight ends here on first down. Now Lawrence. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Evan Ingram was the intended target, but it's going to be second down. Now Lawrence. And that is caught. It's Davis. And he gets it all the way down inside the 10 and mark him at the 5. Called out a very strong gain of 24. And remember, this drive started off following the turnover. And they've taken no time working their way down the short field. A nice connection there. And now they're looking at a first and goal. Now Lawrence to throw. To the goal line but it's incomplete. Down this close to the goal line, first down. Surprised that wasn't a run? I am, and you know I'm old school. I want to run the ball on first down in this situation because second down, that gives me that option of running play action and maybe throwing it. A line of scrimmage, once again the five as they get ready for second and goal. Straight ahead, ETN. And he will get this into the end zone for a Jaguar touchdown. Travis Etienne, a five-yard touchdown run. And the Jaguars take a three-touchdown lead. He keeps carrying the ball into the end zone, and in this one, he's sort of carrying the team on his back. He's the reason that they lead right now, no question about it. And you talk about on his back, he's not minding the extra weight at all, is he? Carrying that just as lightly as he does the football. Yeah, those, what a great performance so far. Those three touchdowns, it's got him in the lead. Extra point splits the uprights, and the lead now to three touchdowns at 21. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. And he'll just sit on this one as their drive will start at the 25. And now Chicago getting ready to go as they take the field. Well, it's a game that they would rather probably forget about, at least to this point, Charles. And one reason is turnovers. The turnover on the last drive, they had the issue in the first half as well, and that's really unfortunately for them helped to put this game out of reach and you know they won't want to admit it to themselves but we know that winning the game is pretty much out of the picture now so their bottom line is how do they play a clean game the rest of this one right take care of the football no more turnovers and see how that works on the ground it's swift to start the drive and they nearly get this all the way to midfield mark him down at the 49 Good yardage as he rumbles for 24 at a first. Well, they've certainly been successful throwing it around in this game. That's allowed them to move the ball on offense. But I've got to tell you, to watch them run the football and successfully, I'm not taking sides. But to see the ball in a running back's hands, oh, that's football for me. First down, and they go with Swift again. A beautiful fake. And he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. It's another first down as this time they get an even 20. Pretty explosive run on that inside handoff, and when you're a runner of his caliber, you don't need a big crease. You really don't, but also what we're seeing is an offensive line that's taking charge at the point of attack, aren't we? Not only are they controlling the initial contact, they're actually utilizing what they call the strain the next two to three seconds to continue to move people. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. Looking to throw. Williams caught by Allen so the completion good for just three and that'll make it second down it's a game of matchups and that's why you take your receivers and move them around a bunch especially your best guys and when they work out of the slot you often hear the coaches talk about how great it is because it gives you a two-way go you can break out or you can break in that makes it hard to defend And he'll go right back to Allen. That's complete. 
call it a gain of three on the play. And that'll bring us to a third and four. The goal of a wide receiver screen is get enough blockers in front to create a wall and let him pick his spot to run the football. How about the defense there swarming to it and not allowing that to happen? Did not let him get downfield. Back to throw. Williams able to find the open man. That's complete. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Jaguars' 15-yard line. Three quarters have come and gone. This is the National Football League on EA Sports. Back now in Jacksonville. A lot of happy faces in the crowd at this point as their guys have a big lead here to start quarter number four. Line of scrimmage, the 15. It's first and 10. Back to throw again. This is caught. And the Bears are going to be set up with a first and goal on a pass play that moves them all the way down to the one. Well, I can put my defensive cap on right now, and I know they're saying don't give up any big plays now. They've controlled this game throughout, and all they want to do is see it through to the end. I think they let their guard down a little bit with that last completion. Sometimes when you're trying not to give up bigger plays, you don't react as fast as you should on other throws. And they'll try the option on first and goal. And he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Chicago. It's their quarterback keeping it himself from a yard out. And the Bears have got it back to a two-score game here in the fourth. Well, I'd have to say that for him, that was an all-encompassing drive because it was his arm that got his team down to that point, but his legs that finished the deal. Give him credit for making it happen. Santos able to tack on the extra point, and the lead will be cut down to 14. Now, after the touchdown, here's Santos to kick this one away. The return man down to a knee, and this will come out to the 25-yard line. As the offense returns, let's take a look at running back Travis Etienne. I guess it kind of goes without saying at this point, but he's had a great game, as we like to say, a nose for the end zone, no doubt. Continues to find it throughout this game, and I'm sure he's got a nice place to live. He might want to make an offer on the end zone for a second home <laughs> because that's what it's been like throughout this contest. He knows how to get there, and boy, he looks happy when he does. He's already bought all the property in the end zone. That's the problem. He's going to sell to himself now. And they'll throw on first down with Lawrence. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. Well, no one likes to see that drop, but I'll guarantee it's not going to stop his quarterback from going back to him anytime he has open space. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. ETN up the middle. And he'll be upended at the 28-yard line. Just a three-yard gain there. The Jaguars on third down. They're hitting at 60%, 6 out of 10 thus far. This is third and seven. That is caught, and he will have a Jaguars first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And that pickup of a first down, that's going to leave a mark because they really needed to stop them there, didn't they? Oh, so frustrating. Defensively, you're a play away from getting that football back here down late. Tough. Now they've got to find a way to create a turnover or takeaway. Otherwise, this one will probably get away from them. Now Lawrence on first down. A short throw to Ingram. And he'll work it across midfield inside the 45. Ten more there and another first down. They're going to empty the backfield here, so you know this ball's likely to come out quick. They let the four outside receivers run deeper routes and then let the tight end just make a beeline across the formation 
He's able to make the catch and turn it into good yardage and a first down. On first and 10, it's ETN. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. Starting to become a tough spot for this defense. You're down fourth quarter, looking a little fatigued maybe on that side of the ball. Partner, we've seen this before, haven't we? Because every coach we've ever talked to says body language is important. And now you're seeing guys with their hands on their hips, they're bent over, hands on their knees. And the offensive guys are just saying, let's just keep running it out. We've got them now. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. On this day, the ground has been his, but at least on that individual play, we just saw the defense finally with a win. Yeah, they finally got one, and that's a win for them, but all game long. He's seen the holes, and they've been huge for him. Kind of like a baseball hitter in the zone. The ball seems bigger, and he's just whacking it. These guys, they've got it going today. And he is going to have a Jags first down, and he was able to get it by plenty. A gain of eight on third and three. They bring pressure there on third down, but this is a nice job of picking it up and making sure their guy has time to deliver the football. And they wind up getting the first down. They go play action with Lawrence. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. But fortunately, he's able to recover his own fumble. That could have been trouble. A lot of bad news on that play for them, wasn't there? Lost the football, lost a lot of yardage, but I think the good news outweighs it. Able to retain possession. That was big for them. Now this one from about two counties over after the sack. They come up on a second and very long. Lawrence will throw. He'll get this out to the flat for ETN. So give him five yards there on the pitch and catch. And they're going to be staring at a third and long here. So certainly in a pickle here. They have a mile to go to try to pick up the first. We'll see what they've drawn up. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. He's got his man on the crossing route. A heck of a play there on third down, but amazingly, they're still short for fourth. Boy, they had a lot of real estate to make up there, but what a big-time play for them. Nice completion, excellent gain. Now they're in fourth and manageable. Just a little short, though, with that marker. And his kick is good. And that will extend their lead even further. So with that, you figure that ah, this game's pretty much out of reach at this point. He has to take a heck of a comeback to come from three scores down. But don't change that channel. Don't go away. Miracles can happen. And you want to be here in case it does. You're a company man. Aren't I, though? The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. And this will not be returned. It'll come out to the 25. Onto the field now come the Bears. Well, this game, it has had no shortage of offense. They've been able to put up a decent amount of points on this side, Charles. They just have not been able to keep pace with the other offense they're going against here. Yeah, that's a good way of pointing things out because now it's not a total loss because, as you said, They've scored some points, so there's some plays they can build on, moments where the game plan actually worked. But overall, though, they were just out personnel. They were going up against a team that's playing at an elite level. Here's Williams on first and 10. And that one's going to come up a little short. It's incomplete. At this point, down big, you'd have to imagine this defense, they're just going to sit back, blanket the field as best they can. Yeah, this is actually the easy part of the game for them because, just as you noted, they can sit back, keep everything in front of them. But they've blanketed the field the entire game using a variety of coverages. And second and ten, he'll look to throw again. And that one to the right side and incomplete. Well, so far on this drive, they've done some good work. They force incompletions on first and second down, bring up third and ten. 
That brings up the big question. Do they bring pressure or do they play coverage on this down? Now they face a third and 10 after back-to-back -back incompletions. Looking to throw, Williams. Work in the middle of the field and he's got a man complete. And he will have the Bears first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. So with a yardage on that completion, he's now right at exactly 300 yards on the game. And isn't that the magic number you get, all right, 300? That means it's going to go on a commemorative football to put on your mantle when they give you the game ball if your team wins. So much confidence flowing through him right now, throwing the football. I think it's permeated itself throughout the entire team. They feel good about what they're doing. Williams throw complete there to Moore. And they'll work this down to the 40-yard line, tackled there. 17 yards on the play as they try to eat into this 17-point deficit. Defensively here, you've got the cushion, but back-to-back -back pretty big pass plays there. Bend but don't break, but are they bending too much? I think that they are. To me, it'd be like playing basketball, and you put up a token press. Make sure you get up there and make them eat up some time. Make it a little bit of resistance so they can't just run it right down your throat. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. Offense was moving it a little bit, had them back on their heels, but they earned a brief pause by forcing the incompletion. That gives them a quick chance to regroup and try and mount a stand before they're backed up even further. So second down and 10, once again, they'll go from the 40. Again, he'll drop to throw. And he comes back with one complete. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little gain. Nine yards, and that leaves him just short, so it'll be third and less than a yard. They'll try and run here with Swift. Gets past one man, and he will have the Bears first down, and he'll have it by plenty as they're able to keep the drive alive on third and inches. Williams throwing on first down. He's got his man. That's Everett, the tight end. Touchdown! Gerald Everett with his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Bears get a bit closer. Well, we know someone just added to his touchdown passing total, but all he did was get the ball out quickly to his tight end and let him take care of business the rest of the way. Now the point after try for Santos. And the lead is trimmed down to 10. So that one, an eight-play drive, it spans 75 yards. And it culminates in a touchdown for Chicago. After the touchdown here, Santos to kick this one away. Taken at the goal line. And they'll get him down inside the 30 at the 27. The Jaguars getting set to go. Well, there are two scores on the plus side. Still time here in this fourth quarter, but maybe you start thinking about playing keep away? Yeah, I think here's the situation. You're not thinking touchdowns anymore. You're just thinking first downs to keep up with your theme there playing keep away. First downs, they can't touch the ball. Lawrence bringing the Jaguars up first and 10 at their own 27. They'll start out here with a jet sweep. He'll be hit down at the 33, five yards on the play. But defensively, they had that one pretty well figured out. Yeah, one of the things about this play, it can be even more effective when you run a lot of motion and there's plenty of times you don't hand it off. From the 33, here's a second and five. Lawrence. Over the middle, he's got his tight end, Ingram. He's been big, two touchdowns earlier. Now he's got a first down here. That was a route run, not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. 
found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw him, and was able to make the sure catch and flip the down marker back to one. Play action. It's Lawrence. Caught right side. Davis. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. A gain of 10 as they look to add on to this 10-point lead. Partner, I like that they're staying aggressive on yeah. offense because, to me, this drive is what is known as a put-away drive. You score here, that might put this one to bed. I like the fact that they're playing with confidence and not playing with fear. A handoff for ETN. And he gets forward up the middle, but only for a couple. It'll be second down. Clock continuing to run. They'll probably wind this all the way before snapping it on second down. And they'll go again with ETN. And he's going to get this one down near the 45-yard line. Call it a gain of a couple, and that's going to leave him with a third and about five. Coming up to the line, and they will need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. Here's Lawrence to throw. Screenplay, here's ETN. And this won't do it. He needed six. He only got halfway there. Three yards, all they could muster there, and it'll bring up fourth down. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. So it's Jaguar football here as we welcome you back. They've got a fourth down here in a game that looks to have been decided already. Here's Logan Cook now as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. And this will carry out of bounds. Where are they going to spot it now? At about the 18-yard line, it looks like. So now the Bears... Down by 10, a minute 56 to go. They'll need a score here and also likely an onside kick recovery, but first things first, first and 10. Now Williams on first down. And his throw here is incomplete. And let's face it, this defense has had its share of struggles all game long, and they know that they can put it all behind them if they defend well here in the two-minute drill. Excellent coverage right there to force the incompletion. They'll try again here, second and ten. Back to throw, Williams. And he takes us beyond the 35 before going out of bounds. Clock management, definitely critical here if they want to get back in this game. Absolutely agreed. They have to up the tempo in this case, down a couple of scores. Want to make sure they have a chance to win this ball game. All three timeouts remain, but they've got to score quick. It's first and 10. Looking to throw. Williams. Give him another one right back to Allen. And getting this just shy of midfield, they'll spot it at the 49. They'll come up first and 10 here. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. And his throw is incomplete. Whew, that's certainly not the worst thing. It stops the clock and lets your offense catch its breath and lets us exhale a little bit. Now I expect them to call a couple plays in the huddle so they're ready if a tackle happens inbounds. Here's second down. They'll look to throw again. They'll try and set up the screen to Swift. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Jaguars' 40. 
when you run a screen pass really well, you got to like the look of it because so many parts come together to make it work well. The offensive linemen where they're faking people out, the back slipping out there, catching the football, then all of them going together as one unit downfield, a really nice pickup. Williams, now he'll get this into the hands of Swift once again. Now the Bears going to call the first of their timeouts. As the clock stops here with 46 seconds left to play. Here comes second down at five. Back to throw. Williams. Oh, that'll be incomplete. Well, he took a shot as he let that go. And it's going to bring up a third down. Now the question is obvious. Do you try to kick the field goal right here knowing that you need two scores? I would be thinking about if I were on that sideline. Get the field goal now, try and get the touchdown later. Well, this crowd doing their best to make a lot of racket. It's third and five. Throwing there, but this pass is going to wind up incomplete. Just a difficult situation to be in here in the final minute. Down two scores. You know you need some providence from somewhere. They're going to keep firing away till the end, but this one falls incomplete. So here we go. Maybe the biggest kick of the game forthcoming. This to get it back to a one-score game. Santos' kick is up and through, and this is back down to a seven-point game. So they hadn't called on him at all until this point, but he comes through here and buries one from long range. Yeah, that's awfully impressive because usually kickers like to get that first one out of their system in the first quarter, sort of get them into the flow of the game, but to come in this late and knock it down from long distance, give him a lot of credit. So still a small chance here with a little over 30 seconds to go, but they're definitely going to need this one to bounce their way. And this is going to be recovered by the hand team. And that should just about put a camper on this one. Well, fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And I know we've brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it they do actually recover the ball which is what we saw here i just wonder if that number is much more of a anecdotal type of a number kind of like when the coaches tell us well when you score on special teams 93 percent of the time you win the game i'm still waiting to see that number is empirical Down to a knee here. The defense still with a couple of timeouts. We'll see if they want to use them. Now the Bears going to use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with 27 seconds showing on the clock. Down to a knee for the Jags. Victory seemingly in hand. Now the Bears will use their third and final timeout. And as the two teams talk it over on their respective sidelines, we take a break. Lawrence to a knee, and that will write a finish to this one. Well, taking that knee, maybe just a sigh of relief. They withstood a big fourth quarter comeback. Able to hold on, though. Certainly looked like they had things going their way, didn't it? In the fourth quarter, they had to just hold on. As you said, furious assault on them, but they were able to get it done, take a knee, and head to the locker room with a win.
A cook now on to punt as he gets this one away. And this will be up to the ruling of the side judge here. He says he crossed out of bounds at the 16-yard line. And Charles, in this one, the fourth quarter became a lot more interesting, I know, than I anticipated, probably you anticipated. A comeback bid falling just a little bit short. You're never supposed to count a team out, and I know we didn't on air. 